Hi everyone and welcome to Mad Knitting. My name is Susan, my pronouns are she, her, hers, and I am here to talk to you about my crafting life. Most of the time that's knitting. Today it's a lot of knitting. <laughs> I think this is episode 45, although I'm not entirely sure. Uh, it's the middle of September in 2023, and uh, life has been kind of a whirlwind lately, so I am squeezing this in between work and when I have to pick up my kids and go someplace. Um, there's just, there's been a lot going on. All good things, but things that are keeping me busy and my hands full. Um... You can find me online as Madtown Mama. That's Madtown Mama on Ravelry, Madtown underscore Mama on Instagram. Those are the places where I am the most active, other than here on YouTube. Okay, so today, what I have to share about, I want to do a little recap of the Wisconsin Sheep and Wool Festival because I did go um, <clears throat> and I did buy a few things, so I'll share those with you. And then I've got some knitting projects to share. And I have been doing some reading, but I might not have time for that today. So we'll just see how that goes. Um, in case you're new here, I live in Madison, Wisconsin with my family. I also work from home, um, which has its pros and cons. But one of the pros is that my schedule is flexible enough that if I'm caught up on my to-do list and don't have too many meetings, I can carve out some time uh, during the day when I want to make these videos. So I have just a little bit of time today. I'm actually coming to you from my mudroom because it's been kind of rainy and gloomy today and the light is pretty crappy <laughs> everywhere in the house and I don't have a fancy setup at all. I just do these videos on my phone and I don't have lights or anything like that. So I try to find a place that has decent natural light and that um, there's not too many shadows or whatever. So it's kind of dirty in here, but all you can see is me and the gray wall behind me. Um, over here, I've got grocery bags. Down here, I've got recycling. There's just a bunch of crap, but anyway. Okay, so the Wisconsin Sheep and Wool Festival is always the second weekend in September, Friday through Sunday. Um, this year I had stuff going on all day Friday and all day Saturday, but Sunday I actually had available. So I made plans to go with a friend of mine. Her name is Pat and she's kind of my knitting bestie around here. Um, I met her when my son, who is now 17, was just a teeny, teeny, teeny baby. Um, I walked into a shop and there happened to be this group of people knitting together and they invited me to join them and I met them just about every week for a long time after that. Um, then one by one every single one of them moved away out of state. Um, a few of them were my age and moved away for job opportunities. Um, several were retired age and moved to be closer to their adult children and my friend Pat is still here. Um, she is in her mid-70s and we don't meet every week anymore, but we get together when we can. And she's just, uh, she is just one of those people who can connect with anybody. Um, she's wonderful. So we drove together to the festival, which is at the Jefferson County um, Fairgrounds. And this is the only fiber festival I have attended. Um, I like it. For me, it's a pretty good size. Like there's plenty to see. If you want to look at sheep, they have Hall of Breeds and they have kids doing show sheep and they have um, those dog trials. So like, you know, the sheep dog, the dogs rounding up the sheep in the field, you can watch that. And shearing demonstrations. I've never taken a class at the festival. I'm not particularly interested in that. Um, but I know there are a lot of people who do. And then they have two big barns full of vendors. And I have to say, by this point, I have been to this festival enough that I pretty much know what to expect from the vendor barns. I know that some probably change a bit from year to year, but there's a lot of the same stuff from one year to the next, which is kind of nice because 
uh, I don't build myself up too much going in. Um, but this year there was one thing that I absolutely knew I wanted to purchase and I did manage to get it. I do not have it here with me. It is outside in our shed in the backyard. It is a 10 pound bag of wool nuggets or wool pellets. I forget exactly what they're called. Um, they're from Utopia, which I've talked about before. They're one of my favorite sort of local, they have a mill. They also do a lot of yarn dyeing of commercial bases. They're just fabulous. Um, but with their mill, they just got this new piece of equipment that will take wool that is not good enough quality to turn into yarn or spinning fiber. And I don't even know how much it's washed, but they shred it and then put it through this machine that compacts it into these teeny little pellets. Like they look like little animal turds, to be honest. Um, and they smell a little bit like that too, which is why this is out in my shed. But these pellets are supposed to be really good for your garden. Um, they say that it repels slugs and snails. I don't have too much of an issue with slugs and snails at this point. Um, I imagine that's if you just sprinkle it at the top of your garden. But it's also supposed to be good um, for retaining water in the soil and releasing nitrogen slowly and just a good thing, kind of like compost that you would mix in. So I got a big bag of these because my garden always needs help. Um, and I like to plant garlic every fall. So this is in partly in preparation for that. Um, I have other plans for the garden, but we'll see what I get around to. I just have a lot going on these days and a lot of travel coming up and family has needs and everything. So anyway, so I'm very excited about that purchase. Um, it's definitely the smelliest purchase that I came home with. Um, another purchase that I made, actually, maybe I'll go in order of the things that I bought. The wool pellets were actually the last thing, near the last thing. Um, I did not buy that much yarn, to be honest. So one of the first things I got was this book of potholder loom designs. I have checked this out from the library at least once, maybe more than once. Um, if you've been watching for a while, you may remember that I got really into doing these potholder, you know, these handmade potholders for gifts last Christmas. And it was really fun. And I still have a lot of loops left. And while it's fun to improvise and just kind of see what happens when you mix up colors and designs however you want, it's pretty nice to have handy a book that tells you how to, you know, how, how to get particular designs. And it's just, it's very straightforward. There is just full of diagrams that shows, you know, like there's this gingham pattern here, for example, and it shows you what colors to line up one way and the other way to get the, the pattern that you want. So I just thought this would be a very useful thing to have because I, I enjoy making those. It's, it's, um, it's meditative, you know, it's a different kind of craft. So that's one thing. The next thing I picked up, we were walking by this booth. Oh shoot, it's stuck on something that had, I forget what else they were selling. This is a gift for someone and I'm not going to say who it's for just in case they're watching. But this is kind of a, well, you can see that it's a ball and it's made out of some kind of flexible um, sticks or plant material. And it's been stuffed with fiber. And it is meant to be kind of a wool dispenser or fiber dispenser for birds. So you can hang it up um, somewhere where birds would like to go to collect fiber, maybe in a tree um, or maybe off of a bird feeder or something. I imagine it would be really nice if you could do this close to a window so you could watch the birds, but they'll come and they'll pick out these bits of fiber and use them to build in their nests. And it's all natural fiber, so it's safe for them. Okay, it's better than like plastic or pieces of artificial fabric that they often find outside and use. 
And this ball was not very expensive at all. So I'm kind of, my only regret is that I only got one because after I came home, I thought of like three other people that I think would really like this. So maybe I'll go to the website and see if I can order more. So I got this ball and they also had bags of refill. This is Bernard Family Farm based in Illinois. It says alpaca, sheep, rabbit, and more. So I suppose that's what's in this bag full of fiber. The refill was only three bucks. So I went ahead and got the refill fiber. I will send this along with the ball for this gift. And I just think it's pretty cool and it's all natural and uh, just, just a good thing for nature lovers, right? So that was the second thing I got. Um, there's also a vendor called Maple Hill Farm that sells a lot of skincare products. And I smelled each and every one of them and decided that rosemary mint was my favorite. So I bought a tub of rosemary mint sheep milk lotion. And in the sampling, I just, I discovered how nice the lotion was. It was very soft and silky, but not at all greasy or, you know, didn't leave like a film or residue. So I really liked that. So I bought this for myself. Um, it was a mix of like selfish buying and not so selfish buying. I've only got two skeins of yarn to show you. I actually bought three skeins of yarn, but one of them is for an online swap I'm doing. I have no idea if the person who is the recipient watches my channel. Um, they don't know who I am. This is an anonymous swap, but just in case they're watching, I will not show the yarn that I bought for my swap partner. But I bought two other skeins. I got this skein of Corydale. It's 100% Corydale. And the label just says purveyor of fine yarn. So I don't actually remember if that's like the name of the company or just how they describe themselves. But this is marled Corydale. So it was like a lighter natural color with a darker gray twisted together and then dyed dark blue. This is 100 grams, a little over 300 yards. And this is going to be mittens for my son. Um, you may recall that I made him mittens for Christmas last year and they're so itchy he can't wear them. <laughs> they might even be here. Yeah, they're here. They're right here. Because I'm in the mudroom where all the winter gear lives. This is Icelandic wool that I used to make mittens and he tried them on and they fit and he said, I can't wear these, I have to take them off my hands. So now my husband uses them. So they're going to good use, but my son, who will be going off to college next year, probably in the upper Midwest, we don't know yet for sure, uh, will need more mittens. So that's what this skein of yarn is destined for. Um, I have not decided about what pattern to use. The easiest thing would be to just do the world's simplest mittens, which is a basic tin can knits pattern. That's just plain, you know, a ribbed cuff with stockinette for the, for the main part. But I don't think that would be as warm as color work. So if I can find a color, a contrasting color, preferably a light gray, I can't really imagine anything else that I would like with this particularly in the right weight and feel then I will do a color work mitten, set of mittens for him, which I think would be warmer than plain. Yes, I could knit a plain mitten and do a lining, but that's like twice as much knitting as just the single layer mitten. So we'll see. TBD, hoping to get this done by Christmas. And if I do color work, there will probably be enough left over to do a hat as well. The other skein of yarn I bought is Kind of surprising color wise. This is not really my color, as you can see. Um, it is sport weight wool from Blackberry Ridge Wooden Mill, Woolen Mill. They are based out of Mount Horeb. And this is for a specific purpose. I have quite a bit of their sport weight wool, same base in the color black. And my intention when I bought that a few years ago. When was that? 
think I bought that from a new yarn shop when they opened a few years ago. My intention was to make the Embers sweater by Tin Kennets. Embers is, they have a hat pattern and a sweater, and both of them feature this color work design that I, I think has some pearl stitches. It's, it's pretty simple, but um, it's just sort of little dots of contrasting color against a plain background. And what I like about the idea of using this color against black is that it really will look like embers in a fire because this has the yellows and the oranges and the reds. Some of it's leaning a little bit green, but that's okay. In this variegated colorway that I think will look a lot like embers glowing against coals, against that black yarn. So that's my purpose for this. I bought that black yarn, didn't have a contrast color, thought I would use something for stash, and when I saw this in the Blackberry Ridge booth, I just knew this was going to be perfect, and it's even the same base. So even better. So that's my whole haul from Wisconsin Sheep and Wool. Um, three skeins of yarn, I got some gifts, I got some garden material, and you know, I'm just, I'm just really happy with that. Okay, let's move on to some knitting that I've been doing. I do not have a single finished object to show you. I thought I would by now, but alas, mistakes were made, tears were shed, tears were not shed, but I did get mad and have to eat a piece of cake at one point. I will show you the thing that this is like embarrassing that it's not done. Oh no, I lost a needle. So I've shared these socks a few times already. Um, they're like Barbie socks. I think the colorway is Moon Dancer. This, this is yarn from Republica Unicornia. It's BFL sock and I've talked about it before. And if you've watched me for a while and if you've and if you've heard me talk about knitting socks, I do most of them the same way, which is how I knit these socks. And the reason they're not done is because I reached the point at the very end of the toe where I was done with the decreases and all I need to do is put this end on a darning needle and pull it through those stitches and pull it tight and hide the ends. And I didn't have a darning needle handy, so I set it down and that was like two weeks ago. So technically these are not done, even though I am done with the knitting. They are so close. And they fit and they're really nice and it's been too warm for wool socks, so I also have not been really motivated to finish. But I could get this all done in like three minutes, okay, with the ends. So I'm not counting them as finished yet, but they're close. I really like this yarn. I really like this colorway. And this is the way I do my socks. I can get them done really quickly if I focus on them. Um, I use size one needles. So this is to fit my foot, which is a woman size seven. Um, like medium, I guess, not narrow or wide. I cast on 64 stitches. I knit a two by two rib cuff. I continue on the leg. For this one, I did all stockinette stitch because it was faster. My preferred method for the heel is to do a heel flap and gusset, which I think you can see really well here. I use a slip stitch pattern called Eye of Partridge where you're alternating slip stitches. So it's kind of a checkerboard style rather than having like them all line up. And then Gusset decreases, back down to 64 stitches, continuing on down the foot. In case you're wondering, these mark every 20 rounds so that I don't have to start over counting every time. Every 20 rounds until I get to the end and then I just have to count how many are left before the toe decreases. And that just makes it easier when I do the second sock. I, you can see I have stitch markers in there too. That way I don't have to go all the way back to the gusset to count my rounds to make sure they're exactly the same length because I really do have to have them exactly the same length. I would never just eyeball it. I know that would not end well if I tried that. So that's my first unfinished object. 
easy enough. Um, while I'm talking about socks, let me show you another sock project. I just started these last Monday. So one of the reasons I've had my hands full lately is that my husband had surgery on his shoulder last Monday. It all went very well. It was outpatient. Um, it was not a super invasive procedure. And fortunately, once they got in there, they didn't find anything they weren't expecting. But I did have some time to wait because, you know, I had to take him to the hospital and, and then wait while they were doing the procedure. Um, I actually completely overpacked for that day. I was anticipating having about three hours of time um, when I couldn't see him, which was, which was accurate. And they said I didn't have to stay in the waiting room. They said that they would just call me, you know, when they were ready for me to come back and meet him. So I totally overpacked thinking originally that I was going to be sitting in the waiting room waiting for him. So I packed like four knitting projects and a book. And then it turned out that once they wheeled him back and, you know, I was just, I didn't have to stay there. I was like, I cannot sit still. There's no way I can read a book or knit on this thing while I am waiting for, <laughs> for the surgeon to call. Um, so I actually just drove to a county park that was very near this hospital and I walked for six miles. I just walked and walked and walked until I got that phone call. And then it was another hour after the surgery that he was in the um, post-op, you know, before they were going to wheel him into recovery. So yeah, I had like three hours of walking. But when I was actually in the hospital with him, um, I started a sock. This was one of the projects I brought. The other three are still in the bag, totally not in progress. So, surprise, surprise, this is a Christmas colorway. I think it's called Jingle All The Way. It is the, what is it called? This is from Knit Circus. Knit Circus Yarns is local to me. They are a woman owned business. They are fantastic and I love them. Um, Greatest of Ease is their sock base. So it's 80% superwash wool and 20% nylon. I really like this base. Um, this is very Christmassy. It's kind of ugly, honestly. Like it's very like splattery and that's fine. That's fine with me. I'm okay with that on socks and it's very unapologetically holiday themed. And sometimes you just need that in the middle of winter. So, um, I don't really have a recipient in mind for this. I am making them to fit me. I cast on 64 stitches, same method as the socks I just showed you. So we will see where they end up, but uh, these are good. You know, these are my like take a long project for when I have to wait or sit in a meeting or, or whatever. I actually, I brought these along. I subbed on Sunday morning. Um, I subbed at a church for, for their pianist and, uh, did not want to sit still and listen quietly during the sermon. So I sat still and knit quietly during the sermon because, you know, I had to, I had time to kill before, before what was after the sermon offertory, I guess. Anyway, yeah, these are like my take along project, but you can see the yarn is, it's very cheerful. This is so, um, typical of Knit Circus yarns. They have beautiful, beautiful tonal bases, you know, sort of kettle dyed, um, but they have these wild colorways, some with wild variegation. They also have like gradients and gradient stripes. And it's, it's just so cool, all the techniques they've come up with. And this is just your basic kind of variegated speckly mess, but it's fun. It's kind of fun to see the colors emerge. I would never make a sweater out of something like this, but it's good for socks. So, okay. So those are two sock projects. I have a hat project that I started the other night because I was, <laughs> I'm saving the sweater for last because you guys, ugh. Um, okay. So I was mad at this other project I was working on and I started a hat. I have not made it very far. 
but I wanted something to keep my hands busy. I was watching TV. I've been watching The Good Fight, which I very much enjoy. I'm in season two, I think. Um, so all I have is like a little bit of corrugated ribbing. So you can't see much here. I'll show you the yarn and then I'll show you the pattern. This is yarn from my stash. I bought it ages ago. Not sure what my plan was then. You can see it's going with a the theme. I like, I like greens. <laughs> this is Cascade 220 Sport. It is non-super wash wool. Um, I don't know what the colors are named. I've got the label for this beige. I think they're just, I think it's just numbers. Yeah, there's just a color number, nothing interesting. But this is a light tan, and then this is a very dark evergreen, very heathery evergreen. And I like how they go together. And the pattern I'm using is pretty cool. This is a, it's called the Basita Beanie, I think. I will grab a picture from online and put it up here somewhere because this is just black and white. This is the Salam version. And the designer is this guy named Daniel, <clears throat> who I think watches this channel, so hi. Um, yes, my name is Daniel. On Ravelry, I go by Ibn Sufi, I-B-N-S-U-F-I. I'll put that on the bottom of the screen. I don't really know how to pronounce it. Um, he was, I read in his profile that he was born in Syria and moved to New Jersey when he was a kid. So he is very much, um, of different cultures based on his background and where he grew up. And he incorporates a lot of um, Arabic language and Arabic knowledge. And um, yeah, like symbolism or, or imagery, I guess is the word in his designs. So this one, the design uses a square Kufic Arabic rendering of the word salam, which means peace or peace of mind. Um, and he goes on to explain how he works with color dominance. This, this guy is like an artist and an academic, and he's got a lot of really, really cool hat patterns out there. And this is one that I downloaded. Um, I believe, I know this one is free, and he just asks that you donate to a organization that means something to you. Um, maybe all of his patterns are free. I don't remember exactly, but I just really liked this one. So I downloaded it and I am making it out of these two yarns. So more to come. Um, I would encourage you to check out his patterns because he's got, he's got a lot of really beautiful ones and he knits them in different yarns. So you can see how they look with different fibers and color combinations and stuff. So I'm not too far on this, but it's, it's very, I, I love making hats and I love doing color work. So that's a good one. I still have the two sweaters for my nieces going in progress. I don't have a lot to say about them, but I will show you where I'm at. I was hoping to have gotten farther on them by now, but turns out even kid sweaters, if you're working all in fingering weight, take a while. So the bigger one for my older niece, is this one. I am, she's seven years old, but I am making the biggest size, which is a size 10, because she is very tall for her age. And I didn't want to risk having a sweater that's too small for her. So the pattern is Tuk or Tuck by Gabrielle Dansknit. It's fingering weight and it's actually knit to a proper fingering weight gauge, seven stitches to the inch. It's top down, as you can probably see, it's a cardigan. There is a hood with it too. The hood is a whole lot of extra knitting. That's another reason these are taking so long. I'm almost done with the first sleeve and I have to do the second sleeve and the hood and then I will need to pick up stitches to do a button band and that will go all the way up around the edge of the hood as well. I have talked about this pattern before. Um, she just calls for like a single color, but I'm striping it because I have this beautiful variegated yarn. You know, I'm not into variegated yarn and yet I knit with it a lot, it mm -hmm. seems. This is from Republica Unicornia 
and it is very highly variegated. I think that I would not like it if I was just knitting it without breaking it up with a solid color. You can see how sometimes it's so light it kind of blends in with that white yarn and sometimes it's very dark and sometimes there's this neon. It's kind of cool. I think it's going to be gorgeous on my niece. She has um, very curly strawberry blonde hair and big blue eyes and it'll just it'll just be gorgeous on her. Um, I'm using Cascade Heritage Sock for the contrast for this and the other sweater that I'll show you in a second. Um, so the only real modification I am making to the original instructions is that when the, the designer calls for you to cast on for all the stitches, including some extra stitches for a garter stitch button band going down the front that you'd knit as you go. But I did not think that would look very good with the stripes. I thought it would look messy where I carry the yarn up. And I also thought it would look, um, just not just not very good with the stripes. So I left those stitches off of the cast on and when I am done with the whole rest of the sweater, I might even block it first because this curls so much, I'll pick up all the stitches with a one size smaller needle and do a garter stitch band all the way around that front edge for buttons. Um, I did another little sweater like that before and it worked out great. I love how it looked. So that's the one for my older niece, the one for my younger niece is somewhere in here. Yeah, this one I've made a little more progress on. So this is, it looks like I'm in the middle of the row of the hood, but this is also Republica Unicornia yarn. I'm doing the same thing with striping. This is just uh, the size six instead of the size 10. Um, this yarn, I don't know the name of it, um, of the colorway, but it's more of this turquoise with some speckles in it. So it's not as highly variegated as that other one. And I think you can see in the way it's coming out in the stripes. So yeah, doing this the same way for the hood for this one, I am using only the hand dyed yarn. I really do like how it's coming out. I think for the hood in this first one, this bigger one, I will have to stripe it with the white. I don't think I'm going to have enough of this hand dyed color for the hood. And I also don't, I think it's gonna come out all blotchy and pooly anyway, if I tried. So we're gonna um, do that a little different. We'll see how it looks when I'm all done. I would like to get those done soon. They're kind of turning into a slog for some reason. Maybe because there's two of them and the gauge is so fine and there's all this yarn management, especially on the sleeves because it's small circumference and I'm changing colors every four rounds and they just, the yarn keeps twisting up on itself and it's just kind of annoying. So I'm ready to be, I'm ready to be done with those. The last project I'm gonna show you before we wrap it up is um, this sweater, the Reflections Pullover, which I thought, I thought I was going to have this done, you all. But as you can see, it is far from done. I just kept running into problems with this. So last time I talked about this, which was two episodes ago, I had just discovered that there was a dye lot issue. And I don't know if you could, yeah, you can totally see it. I think it shows up more on the camera than in, you know, than like in real life. But it's pretty clear that the yarn I started with is a different dye lot than the yarn I, than when I joined the second skein. And originally I didn't notice until I had totally used up the first skein, had joined the second skein and was several inches in. Then I looked at the sweater and I was like, whoa, there is clearly a dye lot issue here which was super annoying because it had been going so quickly and I realized I was gonna have to rip it back. I didn't wanna start all the way over, but I did rip back a fair ways so that I could alternate that second skein so that at least it would blend in a little more. It still shows, but I'm okay with, I'm okay with this. I wasn't okay with the, just the line 
but I'm okay with this sort of blending situation. The thing is, this is yarn I got a million years ago from my mom. I wound it up. I got rid of the labels because I was not thinking clearly. Um, so I did not know which skeins had which dye lots. I had no way of telling if this first one was the only outlier or if it was like half and half. This is Cascade 220, by the way, I have six skeins of it. Or if it was going to be like one or two skeins that were outliers, I just did not know. And they're so close. Um, the colors are so close. You cannot tell just by looking at them. Like you can only tell once it's been knit up into the sweater. So that was kind of a pain because, you know, I blended these two together. And then as I kept going, I thought, I don't want to have another dye lot snafu so i just was alternating skeins for the whole rest of it so there was again some yarn management that was a little bit annoying um especially when when i got to the part where you split for the armholes so then i have like half the stitches just hanging out on this other needle and i was managing two skeins of yarn as i was doing the other half blah 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 well that was annoying well then I got to the top part. Now the construction of this is really interesting. It's not something I've done before, but once you get to the shoulder construction, the instructions are not very clear at all. <laughs> and I had thought some numbers were off, but I don't think they are now that I've knit it like three times. But I screwed up, had to redo it, screwed up, had to redo it. Um, once you, yeah. It was just, it was just annoying. Plus I was managing all of that with, again, my alternating skeins. Now I ran into another problem. I had actually finished all the neck and started part of a sleeve and I ran into another problem and I filmed a very short clip about it that I will insert here before I go on. Here's a little segment where I'm going to explain where I'm about why I am about to rip out the whole top part of this sweater. Uh, it's nighttime, so the lighting is not great, but this is, this is when I can do this. So this is the Reflections Pullover by Miu KP from the book Contrasts Textured Knitting. And I love this pattern. It's gorgeous. Love this cable pattern. Um, it has a construction that I have not done before. You knit it in one piece from the bottom up, split at the armhole, so you do the front and back separately. Uh, but the unusual part, the part I haven't done, is that you join it all in the round when you get to the top of the armholes, and you do these rapid decreases up the shoulders, so you end up with a shape where you get this nice slope on the shoulders as you're going up. Um, while actually knitting in the round, so you don't have to do any seaming. Then there are some short rows to shape the neck. Um, just fair warning, the instructions are not very clear once you get to this point. They were really good right up into the shoulders, and that took some head scratching and some doing and redoing for me to figure out. Anyway, once you get done with the short rows, then you continue on with this ribbing for the turtleneck and the whole body of the sweater is done at which point you pick up all the stitches around for the armholes and I kind of could tell something was amiss when I was picking up a lot of stitches really close together normally when you are picking up stitches along a vertical edge you're only going to pick up about three stitches for every four rows and I was picking up one for every row and maybe even squeezing in a few extra in order to get the correct stitch count. And that should have been a clue because sure enough, I got a ways down the sleeve and I tried it on and I realized it was really tight, really tight. And I tried to convince myself that the problem was simply that I had started the decreases too soon, that if I just, you know, knit the sleeve straight down to about the elbow before starting the decreases, then it would be fine. So I ripped back and knit straight for a while and I tried it on just a few minutes ago and yeah, this arm is too tight. It would be fine if this was like 
a regular t-shirt, you know, made out of Jersey fabric, but it's not. It's a sweater hand knit out of worsted weight wool. This is Cascade 220 and it's just too tight. And I know that even though I'm really mad at it right now, and I would kind of like to just throw it into the sun, um, I'll be happier in the long run if I go to the trouble of undoing this, redoing the, you know, making the armholes deeper, redoing the top and everything, and getting this armhole depth right. Because if it's too tight, I'm never gonna wanna wear it. Okay, so you can probably see why I'm so annoyed. I filmed that clip, and then I had to go make myself a cup of tea and eat a piece of cake for fortification. And then I was like, okay, I just need to rip this out, get it over with, make it done. And that's what I did. And you know what? Ripping it out wasn't even that bad because, I mean, the sleeve is just stockinette and the top part, I only really had to take it out down to the shoulders where you start the shoulders, which is not all that much because once you are going in the round for the shoulders, well, I added a little bit of height, you know, so the armholes could be longer, but then once you get to the shoulders, you're decreasing a lot. So anyway, so I have made considerable progress just in the two days since I made that video clip, but this is where I'm at. I have some more decreases to do, and then I have um, some short rows, and I need to check the short rows instructions again, because that, that took a couple tries the first time around too. Um, and then you do the, you know, the ribbing. But I think um, I have sort of stuck my arm through this <laughs> and I think the armhole is a much better height. So I may need to just decide how many stitches to pick up based on the measurement of the armhole rather than whatever the instructions say, but I think that'll be fine. So I, I'm sailing along with this finally, I think. It's just, it feels like I've knit the whole thing about twice so far considering all the times I've had to take it out and fix things and it was supposed to be like a pretty easy straightforward pattern but there you go it'll be worth it at the end so this one I was hoping to finish for the colors of fall knit along that the Yarniax host every year that's not going to happen the deadline is Saturday but that's okay um it's just knitting it's just knitting and at the end um, it's worth it to be satisfied with the final product. So, okay, that's all I have for today. I hope you join me next time. Bye-bye now.